Hey, so this 10 minute video is targeted for people that have never printed in a traditional darkroom. So I'm gonna do a black and white darkroom simulation showing how exposure, contrast, and dodging and burning are how traditional photographers manipulated their images. And I'm going to do this as a simulation in Photoshop because color to black and white conversions are incredibly powerful if you just harness those traditional old darkroom tools. Again, like exposure time, contr contrast control, and dodging and burning techniques for local subject contrast. Watch and dig in. So historically, this kind of darkroom manipulation was done on pretty much every single photograph taken because film was basically built to capture a fairly flat image. And so localized dodging and burning contrast adjustment was a part of every great photograph you've ever seen. Like here's a, a shot of uh, Muhammad Ali. You can see there's a plus, plus three circled here and you can see that side of his face is a little bit too white because of the uh, light source is too hot on this side of him. The knuckles are a little too white and then you wanna even out the background. So that is normal for black and white printing. Here's a famous shot of Audrey Hepburn. You can see they brightened up her face. They brightened up the reflections in the car to make it a more visually dynamic image. Here's a image of James Dean. And much like you would think, if you take a shot on a cloudy, rainy day, it's gonna be very flat in some way. Here it's flat because it's missing white. And it's gonna be a very low contrast image, which with manipulated uh, dodging, burning, and contrast adjustment, we get this really crisp full range of tones with a very light background that doesn't look kind of flat and muddy. We have a kind of a higher contrast foreground now, you know, with a shadow against the rainwater. It just makes for a more dramatic image. And here is a portrait of Henri Cartier-Bresson, the famous photographer for capturing the decisive moment. Essentially, they just did some subtle dodging, burning contrast adjustment to make it a more visually striking image. That's all we're doing. To get started with black and white printing, you just need a few items. You need an enlarger, an easel, a timer, and contrast filters. A speed easel is an item that holds your projection paper in registration and gives you a quarter inch white border all the way around your print very quickly. The components of a condenser enlarger are pretty basic. You have a light bulb on the top. You have an area where you can place filters to filter the light before it hits your negative. The negative carrier will go about right here and that's the thing that holds your film negative. You have a lens with f-stops that you need to focus. And then you have a second type of filter that you can put underneath the lens to filter the light. So let's get started. So this is the image I'm going to simulate this process with. And what I want to do is basically make a projection print. So I'm going to turn my light on. This is the white light, so it allows me to focus. There's no paper yet in my easel. And then I'm going to focus the image. And then after it's focused, I'll have to turn it back off. For exposure control, you need a timer. You notice that there's a focus and a time. It's very simple. You basically turn it to focus when you want the white light to focus your image. Here's the time. Here are the lenses that are mounted just underneath the, the enlarger that projects the image. And they have normal f-stops. I'm giving you the terms of over and under exposure in terms of digital, how we think about them now. But remember in film printing, it's based on negative technology. So it's typically the opposite of what you would think. Photographic paper reacts to light the way our skin does the sun. The longer it's exposed, the darker it gets. So I can either make my print normally, or I can give it extra time to make it darker or less time to make it lighter. The other control is contrast control, that range of tones from black to white. Either way we captured it, we can push it the other direction, or we can use them in a creative manner. These are pretty much all of the filters that I was talking about. You all know what contrast is. So a low contrast image is typically visually flat. It's missing white or black or both in this case, as we can see by the histogram, where you have a full range of tones or you have a high contrast image where there's usually lots of blacks and lots of whites and very few grays in between. Our last element of control is burning or dodging. Burning is when you add light to a specific area to make it darker, and dodging is when you block light from hitting the paper, which makes it lighter in that specific area. Ansel Adams was great at making his final image look the way he wanted it to look. So the shot on the left, this is Moonrise over Hernandez. Very flat, right? It's missing whites and blacks. And remember, this is kind of the whole purpose of the zone system is to expand the dynamic range of the film. And if you were to summarize the zone system for just general film shooters, 
typically you expose for the shadows and you develop for the highlights, which is going to give you a very flat negative, but it's going to be full of all potential information to burn and dodge and add contrast to get the image as you visualized it. This is what the print looks like. It's mural size. It's one of his larger prints. And this is what Ansel Adams looked like back when he was shooting these. He typically shot from the top of his car with a giant view camera. So let's get started with making our print. Know everything we want to do, right? So we're double checking the focus because we've been away from the larger for a minute. So let's turn the, the white light back off. We're gonna need a board to make a test strip because unlike our cameras, there is no light meter here. So you basically have to do test strips to establish what is the appropriate amount of time to make the appropriate exposure. So I'm gonna get a board. It's gonna, it's gonna be an opaque board that will allow me to pull all the way across the, the print in increments. And let's say I wanna get about seven test strips. Well, I need to pre-visualize where I wanna pull this board. So I'll simulate that. I'm basically position my board and move it so that I'm going here every two seconds. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the light, turn on my timer for 14 seconds. Let's do it now. One one thousand, two one thousand. One one thousand, two one thousand. So I just made a print. And let's see what we get then. This is the image that we just did. And remember, we started from the right side. So essentially, it accumulated 14 seconds of exposure. And then every time I would move the board, the exposure got lighter and lighter. Now, unfortunately for me, I didn't do this in the right order because ideally you would want the brightest areas of the print and the darkest areas of the print in each individual test strip. So I should have gone from top to bottom. That way I could have had the light area and the darkest area going all the way down, and I'd still have the face in all of the test strip, which is the most important area. But let's work with what we've got. So looking at this, obviously the two, four, six, even the eight in the background is too bright, but I like the eight seconds for the face. That looks like a good exposure. Ten's a little dark, six is a little, little too light. So I, I would definitely target eight seconds for the face, and that's the most important thing. So now I just need to figure out a way to get this area darker. So let's make a base exposure and just take a quick look. If I print everything for eight seconds, you know, I'd have to say that if I could only choose one thing and I could only control my print with exposure, I would choose eight seconds. It gives the best image here. But creatively, I would like to pull down the exposure over here. I like I like the darker rich blacks that were coming in over here on this side. So I'm going to make a 14 second exposure just to see what it looks like. Okay, it looks overall too dark except for this area. I love this area. So essentially what I need to do is I need to do some dodging. I need to dodge him right? Because if he only needs eight seconds and I print this for 14, I need to dodge all those extra seconds off of him. And maybe I want to make a exposure print for eight seconds. So I know he's perfect. And then maybe I could just come in and burn this area and the right side area. Like I have options as to what I do. And remember that's burning and dodging that allows those controls. So let's talk about, let's, you've got to lay it out. I know eight seconds is perfect for his face. I know I probably want around 14 seconds for the right side where those grates are. And I'm going to guess around 12 seconds for this area because 14 is too dark. So I'd probably want to take two seconds off of that. So that's what you do. You kind of figure out your base exposure and then you figure out what you want to dodge and burn. For me, I think the simplest way to approach this is I would just do a base exposure of 12 seconds and I would dodge four seconds out of this, out of his face. That way he'll end up with eight seconds on his face. This area will get 12 and then I'll need to come back in and burn this right side for two more seconds. So let's do that. So I'm load, I am load in my white paper with the white light off and it's only red light, which is down here. And then I'm gonna turn on the white light and start a dodging. Now remember, my exposure is gonna be for 12 seconds and I just need to take four seconds off of that while dodging his face. So I'm gonna start one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, and then I'll pull my dodge tool back out of the way and let the exposure complete. It'll go off. And then I get my uh, burn tool ready because I want just this right side where that grade is, right? And remember, when we did the test strip, we kept the board still once we got it to each alignment and that makes a very harsh line. So when you're dodging and burning, much like feathering in Photoshop, you've got to keep the object moving to feather it so there's not a crisp line. So I turn my timer back on for two seconds. One 1,000, two 1,000, the light goes off. Now we have this latent image, which means it's an invisible image on our projection paper. You don't see anything after you get through doing the printing. You actually have to take it all the way over to the development cycle, develop, you know, put it into developer, the stop, the fix, the water wash, and that's going to give you your final print, which looks like this. So that's a good balance. 
considering we manipulated the exposure on specific local areas of the image. And this is without even any contrast adjustment yet. So just imagine the power that you'll have when you can not only adjust the exposure of certain areas, but adjust the contrast of certain areas to really make it the image you want. Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Go home. Yes! That's awesome! What? You just took one in the jugular, man! Huh. Whoa! Yes! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, I did! Is this bad? Is this bad? You should pull that out! That shit is not cool! Come on! The door, man! Got a fucking door in your neck! <laughs>